Welcome, U.S. Virgin Islands Success. We have another one here from the online arena. Happy New Year for those who are just watching this video. This video is coming from January 3rd, 2021. And what to do about F4 when you have the black pieces. Let's go, guys. Knight to C6, developing queenside knight, as I like to do. Knight F3, E6, E4, D5, E5. Okay. So, so far, four moves have been played, and white is claiming the center here. Guys, this is a video about what to do about f4. When your opponent switches things up, f4 is not a bad move. You can really surprise your opponent with black pieces if you play the right moves. So bishop to c5 played from myself in uh, d4. Attacking and gaining space in the center. While at the same time attacking dark square bishop. Bishop e4 check. c3, bishop a5, and a4. Okay guys, so in this situation, we notice what's happening here. Black is actually going to lose this black bishop. Uh, the dark squared bishop, black is going to lose <laughs> his or her dark squared bishop. So now, uh, b5 was played by myself trying to stop this. And after b4, yes, now the bishop is trapped. So if you play a move like bishop to b6 now, well, there's just nowhere to go. So instead of dropping back, uh, the best move is just to capture the pawn. So yeah, the, the best move is to capture the pawn. And after re claiming it with the c-pawn. Now knight captures on uh, b4 for black. And now a captures on b5. Well, in some cases, I believe it was better to just take with the bishop. After putting up the bishop, takes, takes, and now castles. Um, this is going to be a, a very challenging game for the player with the black pieces now. Um, white can get developed again. Go for something like this. And I think, uh, I think black is, you know, kind of in trouble here. Um, yeah, even this bishop can get developed somewhere like this. And now there's a pin. Uh, how to defend. There really, really is no way to defend that. So we did not see that in the game. Uh, instead, we just saw a5. And now my opponent pushed the b-pawn, b6. C captures on b6, bishop b5 check, bishop takes, d7, queen d7, and short castles. Knight to h6, queen to a4. And now my opponent's saying, well, I'm fine with entering an endgame, being down two pawns, but at least I have a bishop. And I accepted the offer from my opponent, queen captures, rook captures. Knight to d3, getting forward, and f5. Now my opponent giving me a free pawn here. There's definitely a better move for white in this position. But the best move is probably just uh, bishop to d2. And uh, after short castles, now knight can start getting involved. Uh, yeah, you can't play this now because knight captures. So the best move is probably just to swing the other rook across. And I think maybe black has some chances there. So instead after, yes guys, f5. Capturing, knight captures on f5, bishop g5 now. Doesn't really do much. h6, bishop h4, g5. Dropping the bishop all the way back. And now, um, well, bishop f2 was played instead of bishop g3. And now this gives me a chance to play b5, rook to a3. Capturing the bishop and now uh, putting more pressure. So black looks better here. Capturing another pawn. And although white has uh, an extra minor piece back here, on the b1 square. Now b4 covers uh, all the squares that the knight can go to. That knight is basically under arrest. But as we can see now I'm also attacking my opponent's uh, white rook. So I put his rook on a4 now uh, just in case you ever decide to push. There's a knight that's hanging there. So instead after that I played the move uh, rook to c8 now threatening checkmate. So uh, let's just say we play a random move. Like let's just say um, Okay, definitely not that, right? Don't want to give away a knight. So you play a move just like uh, h3 in this position. It's actually rook c1, check and mate. There's nowhere for the king to go, and there's no square that can stop the progress of the rook attacking that white that white king. So instead we saw rook to e2 played by my opponent, now making some room for the king to go somewhere to evade the checkmate. And now rook to c5 played by myself, knight to b3, attacking my rook with the knight. Rook drops back to c6, and this is a fun game. 
Okay, instead, my opponent actually, yeah, he put up the rook, and taking the rook, actually knight captures on e2, king captures on e2. This was another line, guys, I just reviewed, but this is what happened in the game now. And black actually has two rooks that are paying more attention to the center and these pass pawns here on the king side than this uh, knight on b1. As we, as, we, uh, as we showed earlier, guys, this knight is arrested. So now the rook is actually getting a check here on c2 for uh, team black. And after king to d3, rook captures on uh, g2 square and rook a5, played by my opponent, now short, finally short castles. And let's just stop here and take a look at the material after finally short castles for black. And uh, black has a rook and uh, four pawns uh, for a minor piece. So uh, black is actually plus three in this position, guys. Four for seven. Plus three. And knight 1d2 played by my opponent. Rook captures h2. Let's just finish the game now, guys. g3. Rook captures b4, but it's okay. It's too late because now I'm actually going to get this rook behind uh, the passer pawn. But before that, guys, what should, what should black play here is the best move. Right, you're actually supposed to push the pawn here. Exclam slash question mark here by the uh, database engine, but oh, we're going to play g2 anyway. And after knight to f3, attacking the rook. Now dropping the rook back one square and uh, skewering, well, pinning the knight to the white king now. And after king to e2, rook to g8. And uh, this was the final move of the game, guys. Congratulations if you made it through this uh, almost seven minutes of uh, virtual analysis, guys. Brought to you by our operator, Colin Heim, for the new year. And this was a very interesting game here. Uh... Yeah, a couple tries, a couple mistakes, but this is just completely winning. Let's show, uh, for black it is, let's show uh, one continuation for white. If white decides to capture the rook here and we go a little further, king recaptures. And now, uh, what do you play here uh, if you're white? If, you, if you're white here and you decide to play a move like, uh, yeah, dropping the knight back here, well then you're dropping a horse, and after this... You don't need a computer analysis to tell you that black is in complete control of the endgame, and there's really no chance for white to survive. So instead, um, yeah, maybe the best move is just to either move the king, or it says in this position now for white, the, the best move is knight from b to d4. And uh, let's just go for this line now. So uh, queens, force capture, and... Uh, yeah, putting the rook up here, doing a little dance, uh, a little boogie, and this is going to be about it. It's about the most progress you can make. Of course, there's a check there. Uh, maybe going this way. And yeah, white has really no good continuation here. You start checking the king, forcing it to go this way, and basically just start pushing uh, your pawns. There's not much uh, to be done here. Slide all the way across the board. Just make sure that white king doesn't know how to make any progress at this point. So that would be one end game in this in this format. This was a rapid game, guys. 10 plus 10. Thank everyone for watching and paying attention. It's ten, almost 9 minutes now. And should have got something out of this today, as per usual. Thank you for keeping up with the virtual analysis and the arrows and the pieces and the regeneration of... Uh, variations of this game. Take care everyone and have a jolly time and see everyone on the other side with much more to come in the future. Thank you guys. Take care and bye bye for now.